Good morning, Encounter Church family. How are we doing this morning? All right, that's what I like to hear. We also like to welcome our people watching online. We love having you guys here. Are you guys ready to praise God this morning? All right, well, stand up to your feet. We're going to sing this song that we taught you guys a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago. I speak joy. Don, kick us off. Addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong. Just one. 
in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name
Come on, let's lift our hands to Jesus. Let's sing this again. Let's sing this chorus one more time. Robbie, let's sing it again. Come on, let's worship Jesus. Father, we thank you as we come to worship you this morning, to have an encounter with you, that we just surrender to you this morning, that we've come with a spirit of expectation to receive. And Holy Spirit, you are moving, and you're going to continue to move this morning. That we didn't come in here by routine, but we come because we love you, Jesus. And we want to honor you today and make it all about you and not about us. That we worship you not with our own agenda, but just to worship you because you're that good. Regardless of how you bless us, you're our creator. And we just thank you, Father, that we have the freedom to come into the house of the Lord and to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give Jesus some praise? You guys can be seated. You guys can be seated. We're so glad you're here today. If this is your first time here, welcome. We love it that you guys are here. Are you guys ready for the Christmas season? Well, it kind of already is the Christmas season. So here's what we want to do. If you have a tithe or an offering, I want you just to get that out. We're not going to hold it up, but just get it out. Whatever you're giving today, if it's on the phone or the app, just get your phone out. We're going to pray over this, and I just want to remind you the power of giving. Amen? Jesus was on the Mount, the Sermon of the Mount, and he was preaching to the multitude, and his disciples were close to him, and he had said something that was very strange and that they didn't quite understand. He said, give, and it shall be what? Given. Now, in the world that we live in today, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because if you want to gain, you have to save. Correct? You don't want to give, you want to save, or you need to invest. Well, God is saying if you give, it shall be given to you. And also the measure that you give. Now, he's not just talking all about money. But I want to encourage you this morning that if you are believing for a breakthrough in your finances, you got to give. Amen? I know that doesn't make sense, but that's how God works. Give him something to work with. And that 10% is just something to give him to work with. Because I want to I, I encourage you with something. When you give that 10%, he's not blessing the 10%. He's blessing your 90%. Are you with me? The 10% is the seed. What grows is your 90%. And if you're believing for extra, let's say you're really believing for your business to overflow or whatever it looks like, or maybe you just believe and you have enough money for it to buy all the presents you have to, or whatever, right? Give a little bit more than 10%. Amen? Give an offering. Give a little bit more. So you know what, God? I'm going to put this towards this right here and watch it grow. Y'all believe that this morning? Let's pray over this. If you've got it, just hold on to it. Father, we thank you for this giving today. We thank you we're sowing into good ground. You see our giving. You know our heart. And we're releasing it to you because we trust you with our finances. We're not going to let the world pressure us. Father God, but we're going to trust you first with our finances so you can bless the 90% that we walk home with because you really own all of it. But Father God, we want to honor you with our giving, and we just call it blessed this morning that we're sowing it into good ground, and we're going to see that harvest come to manifest. We claim it by faith. We believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, I want to invite Pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Joe, on up, and also Andrew Balfour, if you would also come on up here. We got some announcements for you guys. 
Can y'all give them a hand as they come up? All right. Thank you, Cody, for that. I'm walking in the blessing. You're tall anyways. <laughs> He's came, he goes, it's tall up here. I'm like, really? <laughs> Coming from a 6'4 guy. We got some announcements to make. I don't know if you can read my writing. Uh, first thing we need to talk about is the app. I don't know. Do you know that we have an app? I do. I use it all the time. <laughs> I don't. I'm going to start. If you don't know, and if you're with us online this morning, Encounter Church does have its own very, it's our own app. You can download it, and what can you do on it? And you can do all kinds of stuff. We have a Bible reading you, plan on there. A what? A Bible reading plan. Why would you want that? <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, hello. Yeah, guys, there's all kinds of stuff on the app. We've got a Bible reading plan on there just to help you guys to get into the Word. And this is something really cool because as a corporate body, we can all be reading the same thing at the same time which is awesome, amen? Yeah. Everything that we do is on there, all of our videos, all the, everything is on it. So if you've never downloaded our app, download our app, use our app, and we ask that if you're away from Encounter Church, and we believe that's going to be less and less because we want to see this place, every seat full, that instead of going to Facebook or going to, where else do we have? YouTube. You can just go to our app and watch. And so you can, you can be with us that way. So all right, good job. We took care of the app. Um, end of year giving, we just want to make sure that um, every year this happens after the first week in, in January. They're like, hey, we forgot we have our end of the year giving. Can we put that on to 2023? And Miss Vicki is really, really good, maybe by day, but really um, for you guys that participate in that and do that and like to give a end of the year uh, a gift, we need that in before the end of the year so that we can finish up all of our office stuff and you can be blessed. All right, so that takes care of that app. And then we need to talk about you. Uh-oh. There's a Toby Keith song that says, I want to talk about me. Toby Keith? Yeah. <laughs> when, when were you born? What year were you born? 1999. <laughs> Would you say that again for everybody? 1999. I got two kids, though, so I'm 20 years older than I actually am. Gotcha. That's how that works. Gotcha. <laughs> you have a wife? Yes, I do. What's her name? That's my wife, Dusty. Would you over raise there. your hand over there? Stand up. Stand up. Awesome. She's way prettier than me, so look at her. Yeah, you She's married awesome. way over your head. I know. God's great, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> All the time. God is awesome. Um, we need to talk about Andrew for just a minute. And so, uh, just real quick, just everybody put your hands together for Andrew. I know you don't know why yet, but... That's the way we do things here. We are making a shift here at Encounter Church, a very, very exciting shift. And that shift that we want to bring to you today is that Andrew is now our new youth pastor. So if you would give Andrew a round of thank applause. Thank you, thank you. Very, very excited. And some of you may have the questions and that you may go like, well, where's Pastor Tyler? Pastor Tyler's sitting right back there. Raise your hand. He's still there in all of his glory. We are, we are making a shift and that shift is Pastor Tyler is now going to be helping me with, with systems and, and office things, and we've moved him to executive pastor, and now Andrew is our youth pastor. So great things are coming as we experience growth here at Encounter Church. So if you would, guys, if you would just stretch a hand out, we're going to pray over Andrew this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Andrew. Lord, we just lift him up to you. We just thank you that he has stepped into his calling. We thank you for his patience. We thank you for his knowledge. And Lord, we just thank you for the fire that he has for youth. So we just thank you for every relationship that he builds and for everybody that he brings closer to uh, to the, to the kingdom, Lord. We just thank you that you have gifted us with him, and we just thank you right now that he just steps into his full potential. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let's give him a round of applause, and we're going to get started. Andrew, we're glad to have you. If you don't know and you haven't been here since the beginning of this church, uh, Andrew has been here at Encounter Church since he was two years old, I believe. He came here. We have pictures, and when we find and we look at old pictures of the church, we find Andrew, and even when he was young, he was still tall. Uh, <laughs> running, running, running. So he knows. He knows the culture. He knows what we're about. And I tell you, he has got a, a great, great vision uh, for our youth. So I would suggest, and if you would, get to know him. Give him a pat on the back. Somebody take him to lunch. Somebody take him to dinner. So he's got a, a, a tough 
a, a tough job to have. You know, he likes the blue sky. We're calling in blue sky gift cards. We're calling in taking him to lunch. So thank you for stepping in to your calling. If you guys would go ahead and open your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 1. That's where we're going to start this morning. But before we do, I just want to speak something over you this morning. I'm excited this morning to be here, to be here in front of you. And I hope that you're excited. And this morning in my quiet time, as I was praying in the Spirit, and guys, I just want to, I want to make a plug for praying in the Spirit. If you're not doing it, you're missing out. If you're not praying in the Spirit every single morning, you're missing out. So this morning I was praying in the Spirit this morning, and the, the Lord just impressed on me. And what he impressed on me was is that the Lord said, I want to be a blessing to Encounter Church. I want to be a blessing to those that call Encounter Church their home. So I just want to speak that over you this morning. In Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26, it says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. And I just speak that over everybody in this place this morning, that this morning, the Lord is in front of you. The Lord is saying, I am in front of you, I am pleased, and I'm going to bless you. Isn't that good? Yeah. And the second thing that he impressed on me this morning was, is something that we used to say around here all the time. This is something I used to live my life by, and shame on me for not, but he said, you know, make sure that you tell everybody that is online and make sure that you tell everybody that has come to Encounter Church this morning that you're blessed and that you're highly favored. Right. You're blessed and you're highly favored. Right. Do you believe that? Yeah. I believe that. And I, what I want us to do for the next 30 minutes together is, is I want us to act like we are blessed and highly favored in this place today. Not that we were blessed and highly favored, not that we're going to be blessed and highly favored, that we are blessed and highly favored at 1030 on a Sunday morning right here. And when we do that, when we act that way, and there's no reason to act that way because it's already ours, but when we walk in that fruit, peace will come. There is a peace with knowing that you are blessed and highly favored. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. We should have this down by memory because I have referenced it or talked about it or shown you this for the last eight weeks. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the or to the end of the earth. Jesus has called us to be a witness that walks in the fruit of the Spirit and also walks in the manifestations of Jesus. That's what he's talking about right here. He wants us to be that type of witness. I'm gonna say this as many ways as I can. That is our purpose. That is our purpose. And I want you to just write down on your paper right now or write down on your little iPad. Are you a witness or not? All you got to do is write a why or no. Have you been a witness or have you not? And I want you to think on that. I want you to meditate on that. I want you to pray on that because this is the season that we have the opportunity to witness probably more than any time that we will. We are around more people. We are around more dinner tables and lunch tables, and we have more time off than we're going to ever have for the rest of the year. This is our opportunity as witnesses. This is our Super Bowl to take the ball and charge towards the goal line. I was hoping for a little bit more response than that. That's okay. <laughs> we'll get there. Hey, we are witnesses that are blessed and highly favored. Yes. And that is something that we ought to get up in the, and look in the mirror every single morning and go, you know what, I am a witness and I am blessed and highly favored. And you ought to be at peace every single day and you ought to never have a bad day after that. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> Acts chapter 11 verse 24. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. 
So here's what it's talking about. That is just scripture that backs up exactly what I was talking about. It was talking about a witness that is walking in the fruit of the Spirit, and it is talking about a witness that operates in the, manifest, the manifestations of Jesus, and the very end of this tells us what's going to happen. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Man, I don't know how to make it any simpler than that. I don't know how God could make it any more simpler than that. That when we do those two things, people are added to to the Lord. People are added to Encounter Church. There ought not be an empty seat in this place this morning. I'm going to say that again. There ought not be an empty seat in this place this morning. Either we're doers of the word or we are not. I want to ask you a question. This is something that we've asked in men's group, and I don't mean to step on anybody's toes, but this is a good question. How many people have you led to the Lord? Be honest with yourself. How many people have you led to the Lord? And don't give me the excuse, well, I'm just not called to do that. Well, just rip those pages out of the Bible. Seriously. Oh, that's hard. That's hard, Pat. Okay, that's great. I understand that. We'll get you there. But if you're not feeling comfortable leading somebody to the Lord, how many people have you asked to come to church? Man, I'll stand up here all day and I'll shout at them and scream at them and pray at them all. You just get them here. I'll do the work. (laughs) Hey, this is a team effort. But that's serious. That's what we're called to do. There is a feeling when you lead somebody to the Lord like nothing else that you can do. I mean, God paid a big price a huge price to give us the opportunity to witness. Man, I tell you what, I've had a a shift in my thinking this December. And I get excited about December because I get to let let, let my belt out a little bit, get a little bit of time off, get to do the things that I want to. But, you know, this year, I'm truly, I'm going to concentrate I'm going to concentrate on the reason why we're celebrating, and I'm going to be the best witness that I know how to be for the rest of the month. You know, last January, we stood right here and we said, you know what, don't let yourself end up being the same way that you were in January 1st, 2022. And I want you to be honest with yourself right now. If you were to say, I'm in the same place, are you in the same place that you were 365 days ago? I hope not. And if you are, you've got the rest of the month to put some work in. All right? Hey, we can, be, we can procrastinate a little. Be the best witness that you can for the rest of the month and watch how God works in your life. We started talking about peace and manifesting peace in our everyday lives. And last week we learned this. We learned that peace is coming into agreement with how God is manifesting in your life right now. Right? That was kind of the definition of peace. Peace is coming into agreement with how God is manifesting in your life right now. In the storms of life, God is manifesting right now. No matter what circumstance you may be in or you may be facing, God is awesome right now. God wasn't, he was awesome, he is awesome, and he will be awesome but we can't focus on when he's going to be awesome. He is awesome right now. And we get that mindset, we will step into a peace. We will step into a peace like you've never experienced before. And we're going to talk about that today. Peace is not the temporary absence of problems and difficulties. How many of you have said this before? Man, if I can just get this bill paid, (laughs) man, I'm going to be at peace for at least another 30 days. God, if you'll just move this person out of my life, I'll be at peace. All right, we've all said that one. Peace is being in agreement with God where he is right now. The last thing that we learned last, last week is this. Without the peace of God present in our lives, 
we will automatically default to live in fear. I'm going to say that again. Without the peace of God in our lives, we will automatically default to live in fear. That's no fun. But yet we do it and we live that way over and over and over again. Turns me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. I know this is a verse that many of you know by heart. I see this on some of your things that you post and stickers that you have on your cars and stuff like that. Philippians chapter, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In other words, don't worry and don't be in fear. I want you to know this, and I want you to write this down today. Worry is a peace killer. Worry is a peace killer. I think we're having some difficulty with the screen behind us, but they'll get it going. Worry is a peace killer. I want you to be honest with yourselves for just a second. Raise your hand if you've ever worried. For those of you that didn't raise your hand, in about 15 minutes, there will be an altar call. <laughs> because you just fibbed. In the house of the Lord. There are times in our lives that moments of fear and worry strike us. The thing that we want to know about fear and worry is, is that we can't land there. We can't land there. Do you know that pigs can worry? How many animal lovers do we have in this place? How many of you like pigs? How many like bacon? There you go. I saw this article and I wanted to share it with you. I don't know if it's true or not, but I wanted to share. It says a doctor was sitting in his, uh, in his office one day and a pig comes in. The doctor says, how can I help you? And the pig says, well, I just can't sleep at night. The doctor says, well, why can't you sleep at night? And the pig says, well, I'm just, I'm worrying and I'm living in fear of these nightmares that I have every single night. And the doctor scratches his head, and he said, well, what kind of nightmares are you having? And the pig said, well, I keep having this dream that one day I come out of the barn, and, and there's this guy, and he's holding a bucket of food, and he's luring me to come with him, to come to, come to him. And I smell the food, and I go to the food, and, and this guy, he kills me. And he, he cuts my body up, and then he rubs salt all over it. He said, I'm worried about this happening. And the doctor said, man, don't worry. Soon you'll be cured. <laughs> Pigs worry too. Worry happens. But we can't land there. Worry is a peace killer. For all of those that raised your hand to the fact that you've worried before, I'm going to ask you another question. What good did it do? I want you to turn to your neighbor. Those of you that, that raise your hand to worrying, I want you to tell them, tell them the fruit and the goodness that came out of you worrying. I'm looking for a testimony in this place this morning, a testimony that, that shows me that it is actually good to worrying to be anxious. Now, I've tried it many times. It,
Anybody? I didn't think so. Me neither. Worrying has never helped anybody at any time. I want you to repeat after me. It came to pass. It came to pass. Now, I want you to say it like you mean it. It came to pass. And the promises of God shall be. And the promises of God shall be. Amen. It came to pass. Write this down, I hope. Worry is our feeble attempt to be omnipotent and to change the future that we are afraid of. That's what worry is. When we put ourselves into a place of worry, we are saying that we have all of deity, we have all the power to try to change something that we can't. How's that working out for us? Worry has never helped anybody in the history of man. We need to hashtag this anxiety. Chris, I'm making your job easy. <laughs> anxiety is, a, is an issue. It's a huge issue. But it didn't come from God. Fear didn't come from God. Worry didn't come from God. Why would we want to hang on and to meditate on anything that doesn't come from God? I don't. The next time you begin to worry, I want you to do something for me. Or you start to feel anxious. I want you to get into the presence of God. As soon as that worry hits, I want you to get into the presence of God. I want you to get into prayer. I want you to start thanking him for the things that he's done for you. Start thanking him for who you are and who he is. Thank you that he is manifesting his presence in your presence right now. And by definition, you'll experience peace. I put a challenge out to you today. Those of you that struggle with anxiety and worry, when those things begin to pop up on you, when we leave here in about 20 minutes, I want you to try these things. And if they don't work, I want you to call me Monday morning and we're going to talk. And we're going to get it, we're going to get it sorted out. But if nothing changes, nothing changes. Instead of living in anxiety, we're going to come into agreement that he is awesome in this place and that he will make a difference right where we are. It's easier to say than do. But we've got to get into a place that no matter what happens, no matter what storm happens, that we can say, God, you are awesome in this place. And I see you in this place. And it came to pass. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says this, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God surpasses all understanding. How about the word surpasses? It surpasses. When we do the things that we listed just a few minutes ago, the peace of God kicks in and starts to surround our mind and our hearts. 
And it places a hedge of protection around us. It keeps us from fear and worry, destructive thoughts and bad decisions. Do you know that the reason why this scripture is in here is because Satan will try to steal your peace on both sides of God manifesting in your life. Don't believe that he won't. He will, destroy, he will try to steal your peace before you're healed, before your financial breakthrough, and on the other side of it, when it's manifested, he'll take your peace. It's happened to me. It has happened to me. I have seen a miracle of God with Pastor Vic and Jack Johnson. And we ministered for a young lady that was in a wheelchair. And the Holy Spirit began to work, and God manifested in that place. And that girl got up out of that wheelchair. And a week later, she was on this platform giving her testimony. I just saw one of the greatest things that I've ever seen God to do, and I wasn't at peace with it. Because I didn't understand it. It was awesome, but I was like, oh my gosh. What did I just see? It took days and days. And me going back and looking at this scripture going, but his peace surpasses everything. And it calmed me back down. His peace surpasses God's peace can be seen through the Bible in so many places. Daniel, when he's in the lion's den, there was peace. Jesus is asleep on the back of a boat in the middle of a storm, and there was peace. Peter the night before his execution, in jail, was at peace. God's peace can manifest in every single circumstance that you may be in. You can't hide from God's peace. Now, we're good at pushing it away. Because we, why, why do we push it away? We push God's peace away so that we can take control of it and worry about it. Right? Because we want to be in control of it. How's that working out for anybody that continues to try? It's not working for me. Acts 27, verse 22 Paul says this, they're on a ship in the middle of a hurricane. He says, and now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. How many of us could stand on a ship that's in the middle of a hurricane and go, you know what? I am at peace because I know who I am, whose I am, and that God's going to take care of us because he's given me the calling of my life. And no matter what happens, I'm going to fulfill that calling. And the only thing that's going to happen today is this ship's going to be busted. But we're all making it out of here because it came to pass. And it shall be. I think back to the time that Adam and I are in a busted plane going down. In a straight dive, cab full of smoke, we should have crashed into the mountains. And I remember, I remember, as good as I could see Adam through the smoke, I was at peace. I don't know why, but I was at peace. That was the most quietest, most peaceful thing that I think that I've almost ever experienced. Was God manifesting his peace in the most scary time of my life. I remember how it felt. How quiet it was. How smooth it was. Because God's peace surpasses 
the circumstances that we're in. I had lunch with Bill the other day. We need to bring him back so he can talk about our airplane ride. Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but the righteousness and peace and the joy in the Holy Spirit. Our joy comes from being righteousness and walking in the fruit of the Spirit while walking in the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The Lord tells us and shows us this over and over and over again that this is where our peace is at. And if you are not at peace, it is okay to go, why am I not at peace? And you can check, you can check these scriptures. Are you walking in the fruit of the Spirit? Are you walking in the manifestations of Jesus? Are we in the presence of the Lord? God desires for you to be at peace. Especially during this season. This is a season that we get to glorify his name, we get to magnify his name, we get to lift Jesus on high. And we get to share what Jesus did for us on the cross with everybody that we come in contact with. I'm believing that that first week in January, we're going to add church in the sanctuary because we've done such a great job witnessing and bringing people to church. Will you get in agreement with me on that? Amen. That takes us to the keys of maintaining peace in your life. But we're not going to talk about it today. I feel like the Lord's impressing on me that we need to take care of some things. We need to get rid of some worry. We need to get rid of some fear so that we can be ready to hear those keys. So I'm going to ask Daniel to come up. And I just want you to show, just close your Bibles. Turn off your iPads. And we're just going to go into a time of reflection. We'll come back. We'll get the rest of it next week. We're not going anywhere. And just right there where you are at, I just want you to reflect. Reflect back on the last 20 minutes that God was speaking to, to us. And I want you to take one thing. And I want you to write it down. I want you to reflect on that. What is it that God spoke to you this morning? And as you do that, we're going to go into a time of ministry. And we're going to get rid of anxiety and we're going to get rid of fear. We're going to get rid of worry. Because it's hard for us to be the witness that God called us to be when we're not at peace. So I just want you to reflect. Your body and your blood you shed for me. This 
celebrate that God is that awesome in this place. He is that awesome in this place here at Encounter Church this morning that you are blessed and that you are highly favored. I'm going to ask Andrew, would you come down here? Jack Johnson, would you come down here? We're going to go into a time of ministry. And I tell you what, I saw a lot of hands in this place this morning that struggle with worry, anxiety, and fear. Let's be done with that today. Let's step into the part that says, it shall pass. And let's leave those things at the altar this morning. So if that is you this morning, I'm gonna ask you to put some action with your faith and say, you know what, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna get prayed, I'm gonna get hands laid on me that this shall pass. Whatever circumstance that you're living in, whatever thing you're looking eye to eye for, and that worry and that fear and that anxiety is gone. That it is gone. God said to me to tell you this morning that you are blessed and highly favored and that you stand here with peace and you walk out of here with peace this morning. You will not walk out of here in fear. You will not walk out of here in worry this morning that we are walking out of here to be the witness that God called us to be. There's going to be more witnessing going on in Amarillo, Texas this morning because Encounter Church said, I'm a doer of the word and no longer will I live in fear or I will live in peace. So who's with me here this morning? Let's get a start on 2024 right now. Let's don't wait until the first week of January. Let's step into our calling Let's step into the fruit. Let's step into the manifestations of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in this place just waiting to manifest for you. It's not for me. It's not for McCall. It's not for Andrew. It is for you. It is for the body. We are the body. We are the church. Step into your blessing. raised. Don't leave here with it. Leave here with your hand, but don't leave here with what you raised.
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. you begin to to lift your voice and just if pray in the spirit pray to god and tell him how awesome he is just begin to thank him thank him vocally for everything that he's done in your life today we are in a changing culture here at encounter church and if you're having a hard time thinking of something to be thankful for this season thank him for the twenty-two thousand breaths that you took yesterday but just tell him be excited about it be bold about it thank you lord for the twenty-two thousand breaths that i took yesterday thank you for what your son did for me on the cross thank you that you're awesome in this place just begin to lift your voice and begin to honor him and bless him come on let's see it down on the floor and we're just praying in the spirit the Lord impressed on me there's somebody in this place this morning that you've got something that somebody's given to you or something you've earned and you're struggling to hang on to it and you're worrying about what's going to happen to it who's that in this place you're scared to lose it you're scared to lose it and you're spending more time trying to hold on to it than you are in the presence of the Lord. If that's you this morning, let it go. Give it away. Let it go. It's not worth it. It is not worth the peace that it's taken from you. So let's lift our voices one more time as we sing this with everything that we've got and dismiss. Are you ready? It may look like I'm so Let's give the Lord a round of applause this morning. You've experienced his power, his presence in this place today. Do 
not take that for granted as we leave this place. And we just call you blessed and highly favored. We love you. We'll see you right back here Sunday at 10 o'clock. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Encounter Online family. We hope that you enjoyed the word. We hope that you had your own encounter with God today. Now go out there and have a great week. And also remember, there are three ways to give here at Encounter Church. One is through our website, EncounterAmarillo.com slash give, or you can download our app in the app store, Encounter Church, or you can text to give. Now we hope that you guys have a great week. May God be with you.